when utilizing the present perfect tense in German with modals, and we just have a modal to deal with, um, it's pretty straightforward. However, if we have other elements, including another infinitive, then we need to worry about what's called the double infinitive construction. It's not too terribly difficult, but let's take a minute to look at it. So one of the things you need to know for present perfect tense in German is you always need to know what the past participle is. So let's just go ahead and review a little bit of past participles. Um, past participles of modals um, has nothing to do with the double infinitive construction, but it's something good to review. So, uh, dürfen, gedürft, können gekonnt, mögen gemocht, müssen gemusst, sollen gesollt, wollen gewollt. So some of the things you may have noticed is that the past participle follows that get form. So do you get it? Um, you might have also noticed that there's no umlauts. So in uh, können, where there's an umlaut, gekonnt, there's no umlaut utilized in the past participle. And last but certainly not least, when we look at mögen to like, it totally changes. So not only is there no modal, uh, sorry, no umlaut um, from the infinitive to the past participle, but now the G becomes CH. Um, one thing we do need to know for double infinitive construction is this rule. So anytime we utilize the present perfect tense with a modal in German, our auxiliary or helping verb will be haben. So you don't have to worry about sein. Just Ich habe, du hast, er, sie, es hat. Wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben. So, before when we just looked at the present perfect and we just had a modal, um, we would use this construction. So, if the question was, warum hat Fred Wiener Schnitzel gegessen? Um, and we're just using a modal, so wollen, we're not worried about essen at all, just the wollen. It became er hat es gewollt. So there's haben as our auxiliary or our helping verb. It's this new idea, it's not really a new idea, but it's this um, bonus thing we need to consider when we have another infinitive as part of the sentence. So when modals are used in the present perfect tense with a dependent infinitive, so we could have used in that previous example, we don't have a past participle. That's where the double infinitive comes into play. So, in simple present tense, we have here a modal and then the infinitive at the end. So, ich muss nach Hause gehen, hey, I have to go home, or I must go home. In the present perfect tense now, not to say, like, I have to go home, we now have we now have present perfect or conversational past. We want to say I had to go home. So ich muss nach Hause gehen becomes ich habe nach Hause gehen müssen. Sorry about that typo. <laughs> um, so habe is our auxiliary that we use. We don't have to worry about using sein at all. And this is where the double infinitive comes into play. So I I highlighted that accordingly. So double infinitive, two infinitives. So we have our main or dependent infinitive, and now we have the modal in its infinitive form. So that mus goes back to its infinitive form, not as a past participle. So it's not, um, it's uh, not ich habe nach Hause gehen gemusst. So the infinitive is not the past participle, but it's acting like the past participle. It's not in that get form. I mean, logically, from what we knew before, we could have seen it as ich habe nach Hause gehen gemusst, but that does not occur. Once again, gehen müssen. Ich habe nach Hause gehen müssen. When we have a subordinating clause, we have one other thing to worry about. We have to kind of watch out for the word order. So take a look at my notes here. Um, the haben, so previously, 
um, the Hobbin was here, right? This is a dependent clause. This is an independent sentence. Um, so it's simple subject verb, subject verb. So the Hobbit stays there. But when we have a subordinating clause, our word order changes. Um, so the Hobbin goes before the double infinitive. And Hobbin is conjugated to go with the subject of that clause. Zum Beispiel. Meine Schwester hat gesagt. So that's the independent clause. Uh, my sister said. My sister did say. Um, now we have the subordinating clause, which starts here. Das sie das nicht hat machen dürfen. So um, typically you would see this as an independent clause. Sie hat das nicht machen dürfen. But now it's a subordinating clause, so hat goes before machen and dürfen. All right. Um, kind of use the color coding here to follow along. So my sister did say that she was, there's that helping verb, even though we use haben, not allowed, there's the dürfen, to do or to make, machen. So meine Schwester hat gesagt, dass sie das nicht hat machen dürfen. So go ahead and try these. Übung macht den Meister. Um, try these five examples. So use these parts to make sentences in the present perfect tense. So they're all going to utilize a modal. Wollen, sollen, müssen, mögen, dürfen. The first four are just one clause, one complete sentence. And they will utilize double infinitive construction. This last example, example number five, um, notice this is the independent clause, and then this should become a subordinating clause. So watch out on your word order there. Um, go ahead and pause the video, try these five, and then resume the video when you're ready to check your answers. Here we go. Hans hat seine alten Freunde öfter sehen wollen. So double infinitive. Haben, helping verb, conjugated for the subject. Helga hat einen anderen uh, Job finden sollen. Double infinitive. Heidi hat. Haben, conjugated. Double infinitive. Heiraten müssen. Andrea hat. Haben conjugated to go with Andrea. Um, double infinitive construction. And now we get to the last one. See how you did. Did you remember your word order? Haben has to go before the double infinitive construction. Mein Vater hat gesagt, dass er das nicht hat machen dürfen. Because if you remember, when we learned about subordinating uh, clauses um, with subordinating conjunctions, right? The conjugated verb gets pushed to the end. But here, the double infinitive trumps that rule. So hot gets pushed to the end here, in a sense, and then the double infinitive construction. Vielen Dank.